Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, when when you're improvising, what is your job? What is the job that we want to do when we're improvising? Maybe trying to translate ideas to notes. Yeah, we're trying to get what's in our head, what we hear. Yeah, like giving a message. You might want to be giving, translating a message from what you think and what you're expressing at that moment. Okay, and you said a curve. And remember, we start a minute ago, we talked about me not playing right away by taking my time. Seriously, I, I do think of this, and I really encourage my students to do this, and I encourage you. You need to control the moment. There's not much you can control, right? You can't control life very often. But if you're going to play, you can control the moment. You can control when you're going to play. You can try to kind of get yourself in a, a place to where you are as relaxed as you can be. Now, I guarantee you, like I said, you have 60 sets of eyes. I mean, 60 eyes, 30 brains looking at me when I'm playing. Yeah, you get self-conscious. But you have to kind of go in that zone and you go away. It's so different when you're playing with a band. But then there's different things happening between each other going on. So to make a curve, when I'm playing, what, what did I do at the very beginning? What did I do? What is this? What is that? It's a melody. That's the melody. Anybody know what that melody's called? It's a pretty famous one. Things ain't what they used to be. But do -do 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 -do. Okay, by Mercer Ellington, Duke Ellington's son. And it's a blues, like we said, blues and B flat, as you said. Oh, because I could hear you testing it on the guitar behind me. <laughs> okay, and that's the other thing. Whenever you're playing like that, there's all kind of things happening that your senses are going to pick up. That's when you're playing with a group and those interactions are occurring, right? So I played the melody. Then what did I do at the end of the melody? Do you remember it all? Oh, at the very end, and yeah, I did that. But I'm talking after I got done playing the melody at the very beginning. Ah, okay. What did I do before I started the solo? Or maybe let's, let's, let's backtrack before that. Did I play the melody strictly? You know, ba -ba 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 -ba. what did I do? Did I, what's, what's the word? It even happens between Spanish and English. What is it? I did what with the melody? I in interpreted the melody, right? I took liberties with the melody. I didn't play it strictly. So I'm essentially improvising a little bit with the melody, right? That's an important thing to do. I mean, just the melody you showed me, was it Armageddon? I mean, if you listen to the recording, of the original recording with Wayne and them, they're not playing it strictly what's on the page. There's a certain latitude they give that's different than playing Mozart or Beethoven. And even there's a latitude even there, but it's very different. So, I'm playing the melody, I'm taking liberties with it, then after I played the melody, what did I do? Do you remember? This is a lot to ask, because I didn't ask you to think about this at first, <laughs> right? So you're having to go back in your head and say, okay, what did he do? Now I got done with the melody. <laughs> did not do? Play fast. I didn't go right into it quickly, did I? Hmm. What, did I what did I do then? Play simple lines. I played very simple lines that did what? The 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 harmony. Okay, they were arpeggiated, kind of, that line of the harmony, so I made sure I'm in the right place. All right? Does that make sense? Okay. We talk about improvisation, and I think often... When you're starting to improvise, you think it's this magical thing that these people just stand up there and do it. Yeah, there are some. I've had some students and met some people who are just master players that God or whatever just say, you can do this. And it seems effortless to them. Then there's other ones who struggle. And there's all the rest of us in the middle. And we have to work at it. Well, there's things that you need to develop 
to not just improvise, but to do what I'm doing right now. Am I, am I reading a script? Do I have a book in front of me talking about what I want to talk about? No. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to interact with you to give you information a little bit at a time and in an order that kind of makes sense to you, even in a different language. Mm. How is a solo going to be any different than that when you're playing music? Won't it be similar? Mm -hmm. So we start off playing smaller ideas, right? And then what do we do from that? I try to grow from there to what? More complicated things. So what are some of the options? What are some options that makes it more complicated? And this is not rocket science, folks. It's pretty simple. What are some things? If I'm outlining the R harmony in arpeggiated fashions and doing it simply over the chords, what's maybe the next step? Approach notes, maybe. Maybe I do some things like that. Okay, I'm mean, approach notes around those things, connecting my ideas. What do I have to be thinking about when I do that? What? Come on. What do I have to be thinking about? This yeah. thing's going on in my head. There's no band playing with me. I have to be what? Harmony. I have to be hearing the harmony go by. And it's my responsibility to be the one solely putting that harmony down. You know what I mean by that? Hopefully that translates. What I mean by putting the harmony down, so I have to be able to hear a bass player, a guitar player playing, and I have to be able to then react to that and make sure I'm playing harmonically what is gonna make those chords clear. I'm not going to mess with it. I don't want to mess with it because I don't want to. I don't want to do it too soon, because later on I might want to mess with it, get crazy, and then come back to it. All these things are options. So when you're improvising, I know we go to improv improvisation class, and it may be the same here. But what do we talk about in improvisation class? What's some of the things you talk about? Come on. What are some of the things you talk about? Scales. Right? Chords. Rhythm. What else? Rhythm. Come on, give it to me. What else do you talk about? Harmonic Licks. progressions, huh? Licks. Licks, patterns, ideas. Like if I'm going to learn Spanish, you know, and I, I'm, I apologize for being who I am. I'm a silly, typical American who went to school and could have taken Spanish, and I took French, and I, it was terrible. And I didn't learn a language. And here I travel all these places. All right, so if I want to learn your language, what would I do? Would I learn it one syllable at a time? No. Would I even learn it one word at a time? No. What do I learn? Phrase. Phrase. So you're going to learn musical phrases that are commonplace throughout the type of music you want to play. So if you're going to play Brazilian music, there's phrases they're going to play there that are going to be different than maybe your music. It's going to be different than bebop. It's going to be different than modal things. But yet they're still going to be connected because they do what? They pay attention to the harmony. They're rhythmically valid. They fit in with the time. You see what I'm getting at? It's all connected, so you're going to learn phrases. So yes, in an improv class, you'll learn phrases. But do all those things. Do scales, do chords, do licks, this rhythm. Do all those things on their own, or even in combination, create music. Do they? Not quite. Let me put it this way. I have a shovel. You know what a shovel is? Yeah. Okay. I have a hoe. I have a brick. I have concrete. I have what else? Uh, a screwdriver. Does that create a building? No. 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 But what are they? Tools for creating. No. There's tools for creating that building. All right. So the tools you need to learn: scales, chords, harmonic progressions. <laughs> melodies, ideas, what's, but what's the biggest thing? You don't know all that, but what's even bigger than all that that you need to do? Well, it might be like your expression, you know? Like, nah, no, that, you, need, you need that somewhere, but that's an easy thing to say, expression. No, it's above that. How do you know how to express? How do you learn to get in touch with yourself by doing what? What are you doing right now when I speak? Listening. Listening. So if you want to play Armageddon, you want to play things in what they used to be, first thing I would do is do what? I get out this thing that you all have, I go to YouTube or wherever, 
I'd find a recording of it or multiple recordings of it, and I would do what? I would sit down and listen to it. I'd make, I'd make a practice. I mean, that's if you're going to practice and you only have an hour a day, half hour of that is listening. If that's all you can do. Because that's where you learn the language that you're trying to play. Or whether you're going to learn Spanish. If I don't learn Spanish, I'm not going to get it by reading a book. Right? I'm going to get it by act, talk, you talking to me and me having to go, okay, what are they saying? How do I interpret that? How do I say those words back? I understand some of what you're saying pretty well. But when it comes out of my mouth, oh, man. It just sounds silly to me. I just I can't make it work. But the same thing happens with music. How many times can you play the right scale, all right, in that modal tune, and it doesn't sound right? Why does it not sound right? It could be you're starting a little too soon. It could be the wrong scale. It could be a multitude of things. And how, how are you going to figure that out? By me telling you? That's not the best way to learn. My job is to guide you. And one of the things I'm encouraging you to do right now is every day make a dedicated time that you're going to listen. Don't do like what, again, am I speaking too quickly? Are we okay with this? Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Okay. Good, fine. all right. Don't do what most people that I know, including myself, did when we were younger. We're doing homework, and we got the radio on, or the recordings on. I can't tell you how many times I've done work, and I got music on behind me, and I'm not really, li I'm listening, but I'm not really listening. How many times you look at a picture, and you see it, but you don't see it, all right? Now that said, I go to bed every night with music on. Because I want every, even if it's only one little little bit that gets in my brain from a listening like that, I want it. But dedicated listening, like listen to that blues I just played, Armageddon, because you showed it to me, I keep using that word, or so what. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to so what. We all know what so what, the song so what. Yeah. yeah. All right? I can't tell you how many times I've listened to that. And every time I listen to it, I hear something different. It's not because the music changed. What changed? Your perspective. Me. I changed because of me being involved and being able to absorb it. So if you're going to work in improvisation, you've got to sit down and listen. All right? Um, okay, when I was playing the blues, there were some things I was purposely thinking about that I wanted to do so I could talk about it. We talked about scales. Somebody we talked about that in a minute. I made sure I was in the key. I made sure I used blue scales at times, and then I got away from them, and I went and played the chords or scale that went with a specific harmony at that moment. It's like a, it's like a trade. It's a balance. You, you can do all blue scales and still sound still sounds fine, but after a while, it becomes relatively predictable. So the great masters, what they do is they're able to like take that mix it all up and make it happen to where it's not one or the other. I also made sure that I did play ideas that were, I don't want to say they were memorable, that seems like it's too important, but things that you could remember or that you could say, oh, I hear it. There is a great educator, a really good friend of mine. He's, he's elderly now and, and I'm, I'm sad because he's starting to, to not be able to do what he does best. But Jerry Coker is somebody you need to check out. He has a great book on listening to jazz. He talks about the art of listening to jazz, to listening to music, listening to conversation, because it is an engagement, it's a two-way street. If we play, if you play something, and you play it and I'm listening to it, I'm listening to you, but I am also have my history of what I've heard before in my past, right? And you maybe lead me down this path, and I go that way, and you go that way. So it's, a, it's an engagement. When you're, when you're listening, you definitely want to be engaged in the process of listening to what's going on and try to make sure it's, it's resonating with you. So what you want to do is you want to play things that are somewhat recognizable that you can be engaged with me. You know what I mean? Not strange things, not things that are abstract but things that you can identify with. And then my job then is to take that and to change it, to twist it. 
All right. Now, my job isn't to please you. My job is to do what? Play what I hear. But if I want to have an engaged audience, that's part of what I want to do is I want to have you on that journey with me. So as I go through it, I may deviate and do things that are different. You say, oh, I never thought of that. How many times have you gone to a concert? I never thought of that. That's what I'm speaking about. If those things make it possible for you to be engaged in the musical conversation, even though you're not playing. So I purposely thought of things that would be memorable, repetitive. Uh, I also did some things rhythmically that, well, I even did it when I did the melody. You know, I was going, <laughs> sorry, read straight out. <laughs> I just changed it right there, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do that kind of thing. And, and when you're playing, too often we think only of the scale or chord as our musical if, uh, device to use, especially for a non-drummer or, or a bass player, because a bass player is rhythmically involved all the time, walking the lines, but also harmonically. But if we're not a, a drummer, too often we just think of like playing notes. And we end up doing stuff like, you know, I could do that, but is that interesting? Is that what I want to start with? No. I want to get you to want to hear me play. You dig what I'm saying about that? Mm -hmm. So how do I do that? Well, what did I when we talked at the very beginning when you said he didn't play very much at the beginning? You were having to do what's next? So all of a sudden, I have you. It's like the fish. When you go fishing, you got the hook, and you do this a little bit, ah, you got it. That's kind of what you want to do. Then my job, when you talk about after that, after I think about doing some rhythmical things, some use of repetitive heart, mel uh, melodies, things maybe based on the melody of the tune. That's something we, I want to mention. Too often when we improvise, we think we got to make up everything brand new. All right? No. What is the most useful device that you have when you're going to improvise and you're playing on a song? What's the most useful? The melody, Rick. There you go. There's a pile of information right there. If you play the melody, you have right notes, you have right rhythms, you're playing them in the right harmonic place, right? You do what, what would, if you take the melody and mess with that, what is that kind of called in a classical sense? There's a term that's used all the time. Variation. More than that, though. What's the first word that goes with variation? I'm trying to wait theme. to give you a chance to do it. What? Theme. Theme. There you go. Theme and variation. The theme is the melody. Yeah. The variation is what you do after it. So many classical compositions are fantastic. There's one uh, theme uh, Paganini. It's like, wow, that's great. It, it takes this, this one, a little different, a little different, a little different, more different, more different, and it comes back. Is that not what we do when we solo? So don't dismiss knowing the melody. That's right there, there's your life jacket. You're in the middle of the ocean, you're drowning, what do you want? I want a life preserver. That's your life preserver because you know you're in the right place. Drummers, when you're, when you're playing and you're not sure where time is, sing the melody in your head. So now you have the melody along with the scales and the chords. Da, 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 da. All that's gotta be memorized. Right? It's a lot to think about, right? We'll talk about that in a minute, too. What else? So as I progress through that playing, at the end of the tune, well, it's getting toward the end of the tune, I started playing how? Do you remember it all? In, in the solo section? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so what's the most logical thing I'm going to do after I'm playing these different little segments I get to where? I'm playing more complicated, right? I did some things harmonically that weren't there. I played faster. And then when I get done with it, I went back and I started wrapping things up and I go back to the melody. And you're right, I did do a little, code, a little tag at the end of that and ended up so it was easy to know I was ending. All of those are part of what you need to be thinking about when you're working on improvisation. And you can do it in the most simple fashion. It doesn't have to be on giant steps. It doesn't have to be on anything other than what you're working on at that moment, okay? That's an awful lot that I just shared with you. It's a lot to think about, especially when a different language. 
So I admire you for hanging in there with me. Mm. Questions? Yeah, so, I mean, you, you can have all these in your head, right? And yep. Like having the map and yep. trying to build uh -huh. progressively. But mm -hmm. I mean, translating that to the instrument is like a... Yeah, I mean, it's it hard. involves like other well, hard processes, you know? Well, one of the things that that I've discovered when people come to want to play this music, because I didn't come this way. I, I was a I was a typical kid in the states when I went to high school. When I went to elementary school, the teacher went around. Who wants to play music? Because my mom and dad always had music on at home. Okay. Yeah, I want to do it. I was uh, I was eight years old. So it was like three years ago. <laughs> you, guys, you guys understand me better than you think. No, it was a lot longer than that ago. So I wanted to play music. And I had to go through the process of learning my saxophone by taking private lessons, by work, by having really, I really was very lucky having great teachers who cared about me, who cared about the music. And I studied as a classical player. I played, I had to play exactly what's on the page, all that kind of stuff. But there was part of me, he goes, I want more than that. Wasn't better, wasn't worse. So I came up that way. So I had my, I could play the saxophone. I was really pretty good when I was a kid and did all these things and, okay, enough of that. But there are a lot of people come to it today and you may be like this or you don't have that background. So you come to playing jazz all right, and you're asked to do some things. You're asked to be able to play this instrument at a high level, whatever the instrument you play, whether you sing, play drums, doesn't matter, at a high level. So you have to be accomplished at some skill level on your instrument. And then you're asking yourself to make it up. You're asking yourself to understand what generations of men and women have done to create the music, you're asking yourself to understand that when you don't play the instrument real well yet, or you aren't insightful yet. That doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you're asking a lot of yourself at one time. So what's your challenge also, in addition to just working on improvisation, is you gotta be a better instrumentalist. You have to spend time doing whatever it takes to play this or that or sing, that's a different challenge than what I'm talking about. I'm not thinking about, oh, I gotta play. Oh, three and a fingers, one finger, this finger, that finger. Oh, I gotta play my mouth here. I I'm not thinking about I don't think about playing in tune. I don't think about the melody. But when you start off and you're say you're a young adult, say you're twelve years old, all right, and you wanna start playing. I started when I was eight. I didn't start trying to improvise. My dad tried to get me to do that. Mike, you need to kind of make these things up. It's more fun. No, dad, I need to read what's on the page. Mr. So-and-so said to do that. <laughs> okay, but the thing is, if you're trying to make it up and you don't play well, it gets frustrating. You get, you get overwhelmed. It becomes something that you, the battle, you're trying to fight this battle on different fronts and you can't play well yet. So you, first off, you gotta be patient. You gotta find a way, and I'll share some information with you that you can find on my website about how to do some of this. But you gotta dedicate some of your, your practice energy, your concentration, to being a better instrumentalist or a vocalist. You have to do that. You have to establish a sound. When I just played the second ago, whether you liked it or not, it doesn't, you know, it, it does matter, but it doesn't matter. But when you walk out of here, you're going to say, he sounded good, or he did not sound good. You don't care, like, okay, the first note was a concert F, the next note was a concert P flat. You don't do that. You're not going to say, oh, they played triplets here and played this notes here. You don't do that. What do you say? He sounded good, or he did not sound good. Totally about sound. So you have to have an identity on what your sound is like. So I put my, when I, what is the first thing I said when I put the read on and I blew the first note? What did I say? Remember? It was a good read. It was a good read. Why is it a good read? It sounded good. It sounded good to me. I, it was my sound. If I don't have a, if you're not a saxophone player, you don't understand this. All right? 
or if you're a vocalist, you can walk up and your voice is like, oh, it's like, oh, it's the same kind of thing, all mm -hmm. right? If, or a guitar, the, the strings are starting to wear out, you can't do things with them, okay? You get what I'm talking about? So when I put the read on and play it, because here, the altitude's high, my reads don't act the same as they do back home, because we're more at sea level. When I heard, I went, okay, I'm okay now. So that makes me feel better, because I can make my sound as what it is, all right? You need to have, and you need to have that too, where it's your sound, where you are right now. And trust me, I, I could be as your, I could be probably your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Trust me, as life goes on and you keep playing and you keep seriously working at what you're doing, your sound will continue to evolve, just as you as a person will evolve. Your body will change, your mind will change, your skill level will change. All that will impact your sound, and everything you do is predicated on you having a sound. I don't care how fast you play, I don't care how complicated harmonies you play, if you don't sound good, I don't care. I'll say, yeah, the harmony was interesting, but man, they're out of tune. You can't play with anybody else if you're out of tune. It's, and who wants to play music by, I don't wanna play music by myself all the time. I want, it's an interactive, it's, it's a group thing. Okay, I'm trying to get my brain back on what my, 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 my <laughs> teaching improvisation is at a point now where I gotta think again. So you need to have a sound. You get that by playing melodies. Like I, I work on stuff like this. Anyone know, know what that song is? song called Stardust. It was popular in the early part of the last century. Everybody knew that song. I can tell you as a young person, I despised that song. I did not want to play it, probably because it was hard. And you say, I wasn't hard. No, because I know it. But it's hard because it moves around all over the place. It go, the harmony goes different places. It's not part of what I listened to when I was a kid. It's what my parents listened to or my grandparents listened to. So later, I realized as I, as I got older that there were things I needed to be in touch with. And I wanted to play songs where I played the melody and what am I working on? I, did, I improvised, I took liberties with the way that's phrased, but I'm playing the melody pretty strict. So what am I working on? What is my primary goal when I play that song? What was I talking about? Sound. Sound. I want my, my sound to be there. I want it, and that's what I'm working at. So instead of me doing this, and I can tell I need to work on that. What am I playing? I'm playing long tones, right? That's a drag. Nobody likes playing long tones. If they tell you they do, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you know, I didn't buy this to play scales, right? You didn't pick that guitar up to play scales, did you? No. You pick, you, you're doing music to do what? To play so music. Good. To play music, to play songs, right? Whatever that song is, doesn't matter. <laughs> but you have to do that to be able to do what you want to do. Yeah, so I decided, okay, I'm gonna, I need to do long tones. Well, I don't want to play long tones. I'm gonna play ballads, slow tunes. You know this one. If you're working on sound, you'd probably go slower. So you, you work on things that are gonna do what? I think you need to work on things that you need to cover two or three at levels at one time. I wanna learn the song, I wanna work on my sound, I wanna work on my technique. I'm doing all three of those when I'm doing this. If you only think about one of them, you're missing the opportunity for the other ones. You ain't got enough, you're young, 
but you ain't got enough time in your life to take everything one measure at a time, one element at a time. Try to combine them. Um, see what else. Any questions before, we, before I go any further? No questions at all? I can't believe that. I'm not that good. Any questions? Okay, we want to do your modal thing, all right? All right. No questions at all. All right. It's your opportunity. So there's some other things you can do, too, like um, I like doing other roles where a student will come in, and if we're going to do a, bl a blues, I might say, okay, you play, you play the melody, and I'm going to play it. Sorry. What am I doing? Baseline. Welcome to baseline. I want to be in the other role. I can sit down at the piano, I can comp the chords, I can do all those kind of things, so that when I'm playing by myself, I can hear that and try to work through it. So I like taking different roles. So say for, you're talking about modal things? Do me a favor, do the answer. Okay? Well, here's the top. Specific. The harmony is what in comparison to the blues I play? Uh, the harmony doesn't have a relation, some relation with the, in the front, in the corporation. Oh, I'm not sure that's the right answer. I know what you're, I know what you're trying to get to. I'll give it to you. The harmony is long. 
It's a long time on one sound. How many measures am I on the first sound? 16. What is the form of that tune? ABA. ABA, 32 measures in length, song form tune. Okay, the same uh, form is Misty. All right, does it sound like Misty? No, because the harmony is one chord for a long time. In this case, D minor. All right, then it goes what? Where does it go next? It goes up a half step, then back down. All right, that's it. So I have all this time. The blues had chord changes that would occur every maybe every measure. A tune like Misty will have a, a chord change the first measure, then two the next measure, one the next measure, two the next. So the harmony is moving, it's shifting, all right? It's staying around a tonal center, likely, in, like in Misty, but different than in, in when you're doing something like a modal tune. Maiden Voyage is a modal tune. The beginning of um, Recorder Me by Joe Henderson is, has modal aspects. There's all those things. What it means is harmony is like expanded. You're opened up, which means you have the freedom to do all kind of things there. You're not restricted to playing over the chords, okay? Now, when you have more chords, sometimes it's easier to play because the chords tell you what to play, all right? When you have a modal tune, I can do whatever I want. So what do I have to think about? What did I do at the very beginning of that solo? You might have any idea or remember? I, I did it purposely. I always do it. Something like this. What did I do? Play the scale. I just played the scale. But what did I do to the scale? Did I do this? No, I didn't do that. All right. What did I do? What did I do to the scale? Come on. Did I break it down? Okay, I did some of that. What did I, what did I simply did what? I went up the scale, but I, did I do it? Like I didn't do that, right? What did I do? We aligned and starting like in different. I started changing the rhythm with it. I paused here. I hurried here. I did that. And then I come back down. I come up and down a little bit. Why would I do that? Why would you do that? Interesting. Hmm. To make it interesting. Maybe. I thought it was. I, I think it's interesting to do that. But why did I really? Why would you really do that? Excuse me? Okay, to get to kind of get in the mood of the piece. All right, what else would I do for that? Establishing like yeah. the sound? There you go. I'm establishing the key in my head. I can tell you a couple of weeks ago, I had a place, I, had a, I was a concert at school, faculty gala. We all came out and had to play this piece. And, you know, it's real formal and all that, you know, jive. The jazz people are always the loosest ones up there. I was going to play with a really good friend of mine. And we we're going to play a, a tune you might know. Alfonsina El Amar, mm -hmm. right? I love that song. I, it, it, it kills me. I love that tune. And Harry and I play it, and he's this pianist, and he's fantastic. He got sick that day. So here I'm finding out, like, a couple hours beforehand, he's not going to be able to play with me on that. I can't do that one by myself, all right? That's, that's something that needs support harmonically. So I'm going, I have three choices. Not play get someone else to play with me who doesn't know the song, which would, eh, I'm not going to do that. Or play on my own. I can tell you, 10 years before now, I would never do what I did today or what I did that night, where I just get up in front of people and say, the heck with it, I'm playing, whether you like it or not, there you go. That's what I told you. As you get older, you get those things in your head. So I go out there, and my wife goes, what are you going to play? I don't know yet. I don't know. I, I did kind of know. Because <laughs> there's some choices, there's some ballads that I really like. I wasn't going to do something like, I could have done So What. That would have been cool. But the people wouldn't have understood that so well. All right? So I did, um... Yeah, okay. It's a fantastic ballad. So I could have, I have to walk out and not 30 people, just like 400 people sitting there. 
So that's 800 eyes. Well, there's one guy with no eye. So there's only 399 eyes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. But I walk out there, and so I'm going, all right. And I get nervous. I don't want to screw up. All right? There's no one to catch me. So what do I do? I start playing. <laughs> What did, I do, what did I do just right then? What did I do? I just did a scale. I did in the key of the piece. So I'm setting the mood. I'm establishing the key, making sure my read works. I'm not starting off right on the tune where all those things would be uncertain. So I established, all right, once I did a couple, maybe it seemed like a minute, it was probably like 15 seconds. But it wasn't very long, but I'm going, I'm cool. And I played. But that's what I was doing, and so what? I was setting up. The time, you know, the tempo, all right? Although the very first part when I played the bass line, I set that up. But I'm setting the, the key. I'm setting up my mind on what I'm going to play. And then as I went through it, I what did I do? Do you remember any things that I did? Because I did do something specifically to make see if you caught it. There was one I, I kind of actually liked. It was pretty cool. Patterns? I did, I did some repetitive things. Yeah, the one I like was uh That one there I like that they came off better when I played it than that. But things like that where I'm messing with the time, I'm messing with the harmony. I didn't go weird harmonic harmonically, you know, I you could have gone. It is a note in the key. It's like harmonic minor as opposed to playing. There I'm playing wrong notes. Just playing to make it more, to make it evolve. Now, if you're a singer, that's hard to do. It's easy for me to do. I just push a button down. Yeah. I push a wrong button down. I'm cool. But for singing, it's like, uh, you have to really be on top of it. Someone like Bobby McFerrin can do that, but not many other people can do that. <laughs> so when you're playing through a tune, you have those choices. So I'm going, do I play through it? Yeah, I heard Bobby play one night. He did the, he did the Wizard of Oz thing where he did all the parts. Oh, it was fantastic. But getting back to this, so when I'm improvising, I'm just let it go and go from there. But I know the song. I knew the bass line. I knew the melody. Da, da. I mean, how hard is that melody? Yeah. So what? So what? You, you did that for me, so there's a little bit of interaction. But if we had more time, there could be a thing where I could do that, then you could sit. Let's, let's try that. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play the bass line. Just think how we're going to do this. We're going to stay in one key. We're not going to change keys. All right, we'll stay in D concert, D minor. And I want, if you feel the spirit, like you go to church and you feel the spirit to get up and start singing. <laughs> you feel the spirit. I want you to try improvising as I'm playing the bass line. All right? And, I, and even if you have, you can do it. We'll say, you have your guitar out, you, get your, you can have your bass out, do you? All right? You're not playing the bass line. You're improvising. I'm the bass guy. All right? Or I'm the guy playing the melody. Do not. All right? Then the rest of you, if you sing, I want you i tell you, what we'll do is we'll pick different people. Just try singing with it. No one's going to know you're doing this other than your compadres here in this class, right? Here we go. Ready? Ready? So I just improvise. You're going to improvise. I'm gonna, let me start off, okay? You really improvise. You can use the melody later on, but I want you just to. I shouldn't have said that. You, can, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. If you want to play the melody, that, that's your choice. All right? Forget what I said. There you go. No, just one of you at a time. I don't want you, just one at a time. She's going to get like 16 or whatever it is, then it's your turn. Then after it's your turn, maybe it's your turn. Or your turn, or your turn, or whoever's turn, all right? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> 
Thank you. 
That was F sharp minor. I just take a key and start playing and practice on it. You know, that's, that's why I'm practicing scales. I'm not going up and down. When my students come in, I practice with them so that I'm getting paid to do that, which is great. So it kills, you know, two birds with one stone. But when you're playing, it's a matter of once you set them a, a, like an atmosphere, we're still kind of a D minor, right? Close, everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. Can you hear what we just did a second ago? Just think about it. Close your eyes. See if you can hear that. You can hear it, right? It's in the air. There's that C sharp I played. I just grabbed it out of the air. The whole thing is, is once that mood is established, you hear that, you want to be in it. You want, it's like riding a wave on a surfboard. Now, it becomes more complicated when you do tunes that have more chord changes in it. Also becomes simpler because the more chord changes means you got to do this and you can follow the line. For example, like a GPS. We all have a GPS, right? You know what that is? So you have a misty GPS. You want to go from here, the E flat major at the beginning, to the E flat major at the end, right? And there's a path that Harold Gardner wrote that wrote that song. Well, when you improvise, guess what you're doing? You're, recal you're recalibrating. Instead of playing the song that he wrote, which gets you from here and all these little points, and you land there, you're recalibrating. I'm going this way. I'm going that way. I might take some of his line, but I don't like that enough. I'm going to go this way. So your solo is like that. You make a mistake, you recalibrate. You figure out how to get back out of it. You play something you like, oh, I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to go back and do it again. So if you think about things like that, it makes it a little more accessible to what you're used to in daily life. Right? I don't have a watch on. I have no idea how long we've gone, but I'm sure it's over at the time. And it's perfectly okay. 11 what? 15. Oh, wow. Okay, anybody have any questions again? Any things you would like to ask me? Yeah, maybe a simpler one. No, nothing simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And apparently with jazz, it's um, more difficult every time. Mm -hmm. But what if you want to try to close something? I mean, you have the GPS route. You know, it starts here, it ends here, but you don't want it to end here. And you still want it to sound like it's ending. Oh. You, don't, you want it to make it sound like it's ending, but it's not the ending that... Yeah. Not the ending that's traditionally with the tune. Yeah, I mean. Well, so, figure something out. It's your thing. <laughs> easier said than done. I, I totally understand that. It's easier said than done. There are, like, if you're going to make a finale of a tune, there's a reason why cadences and finales of a song are so important to have. Because it really does put closure to something. So you probably have to adhere to that. So if you're doing the GPS concept, you're starting somewhere and you're ending somewhere, and that ending is really an ending. So when I, I was being flip about it, if I just do your thing, if you're going to hit that and you want to go back and do it again, well, that's different than you're finally just making a resolution. You might want to do what? State the melody again. State the obvious. Uh, there's a great recording that all saxophone players know by Coleman Hawkins on Body and Soul. You know the song Body and Soul? Yeah. 1939, him and also a guy named Lester Young. Lester Young did Lester Leaps In. These are two very important solos for saxophone players, but also for jazz musicians, because it was a time in, in, the, in the music that was pivotal. It, meant it moved this way. Instead of being more theme and variation solos that earlier people did, now they started playing chord changes and playing stuff. When he started playing Body and Soul, if you listen to it, he plays two full choruses. He only plays the melody the first eight measures. After that, he's improvising. Even the ending. Well, the ending he ends up, you know, on, yeah. on, the, on the tonic key, but and it's an arrangement, so you can tell it's an ending. But the thing is, he made, he was making it up. That was completely unheard of until then. First eight bars, that's it. Then he arpeggiates a lot of the stuff, which before soloing was like this, more like a line. He's doing this, which is very innovative at the time. It led to bebop and things of that nature. But that's that's a good example there. Anything else? No? Okay, I can I can share this with you. Uh, you if you wish, on my website, because I don't think any of you were in my class yesterday, uh, and I've worked with two combos. I have a website, michaeltracy.com, T-R-A-C-Y. I want to write this down. 
from your phone, michaeltracy.com. On there is, and I can show you, is a page that I have a lot of educational material on it. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, because first off, you're welcome to use anything that's on there. It's free. I want you to take it. All right? Come on. All right. So you go to whatever you know, browser you have. You go to... My website looks like this, all right? It's gonna change, I'm gonna probably update it pretty soon. But if you look across the top of it, it's gonna say Ed Materials, ED Materials. It's short for education, because it could be enough space. So you go, you click on that, and you're gonna see a whole bunch of junk. This thing, if I can do it. Come on, Mike. There we go. You're going to see a whole lot of things here with links, all right? You're going to want to go down. Well, first off, what you want to do is I've already done this for you. You want to go to the very bottom. It says for my friends at El Bosque, and it has all these links. The links are in Spanish, all right? The links are in Spanish, and the topics, I'll just give you an idea of what the topics are so that you have, an, have some sort of concept of what you're going to be reading. One would be process for learning a tune. What I think is important to do to go through to learn a song, all right? It's spelled out step by step. There may be things that you might want to do differently. That's perfectly okay. This is just my suggestion for you to think, all right? There is another one talk it calls practice, things to consider. Things you should consider when you're practicing, what to do. How do you do, you know, what it, what's an effective way of practicing to get the most out of your time? How many of you practiced every day? Come on, at least lie to me. I'm never going to know. <laughs> you need to practice every day. It's like, a, it's like an athlete. You need to build up endurance mentally and physically to be able to do it. Does it mean every day you practice five hours? No. First off, I don't necessarily think I going to practice five hours or recommend that. You want to practice as much as you mentally and physically absorb. All right? And it's going to differ from day to day, from week to week, from year to year in your life. All right? There was a time I did practice five hours a day. I can't do that now. It drive me crazy. But I do try to play every day. So you need to do that. It talks about how to think about, do you practice better at night, better in the daytime? Do you practice better this way or that way? Things for you to just think about. So there's that. There's a checklist for study, which means things that, that we talked about today. Are you working on scales? Are you learning tunes? Are you listening to music? There are suggestions on that. Again, it's in Spanish. There's another one called the vehicle tune type. I mentioned my friend Jerry Coker. He came, he came up with this. Well, but what's the hardest thing about practicing at times? Getting in there to do it, right? That's one, all right? Being motivated to do it. But what to practice? How often you go into a practice room, you sit down like, what am I going to do? You know, it's like, and the next thing you know, an hour has gone by, and you haven't done anything. Or you've done the same old stuff over and over again. You might as well not practice. But you do need to have face time. You know what face time means? Like for a saxophone player or trumpet, you need to have the horn in your mouth because you need to have these, there's a lot of muscles right here. And you, you need to keep them working, all right? You need to have that, but you need to have some reason for being in that room. So this talks about how to pick songs that are appropriate for what you want to learn. And since you're jazz people, these are jazz songs. Yesterday, the groups I had, they were playing more pop tunes, and that's fine too. But this one is focused toward jazz. So Jerry talks about how to determine what he calls a tuned vehicle. Vehicle like a car, tune meaning like a vehicle meaning to play on. Want to be a blues? I'll just give it to you real quickly so you can know what's going to come. One's a blues, specific kind of style of music, right? Another one's an I've Got Rhythm tune, another kind of style of music. Another one's a ballad, a slow song. Another one would be a standard. A standard is a typical, you know, song that typically has words. The melody is longer in nature with note wise, like half notes and quarter notes and whole notes. Then there's another one that has mainly eighth notes. What kind of tune, tune is that? No, not phone. Mostly eighth notes. 
bebop tune. Mm. It's more like an etude. The melody's a bebop. Like you play Donna Lee or Confirmation, those are like etudes in the classical setting, all right? But they're very noty, very fast. They're harmonically much the same as a standard. Standards were taken and used to become bebop tunes, all right? Then you have a Latin tune. What makes a Latin tune different from a bebop tune or a standard? What's the main thing? The rhythm. What about the rhythm? It's not what? Not swung. It's played with a straight rhythm. So it could be a calypso, it could be a tango, it could be a, a bossa nova, it could be a biome, it could be an affoche, it could be one of your tunes. I don't know all the titles of the different styles, but the, as long as the rhythm's like this and not being like that, that fits in that category. Uh, the last category, yeah, the last one, would be a contemporary tune. Has nothing to do with date. Has nothing to do with time. For example, Maiden Voyage, which was recorded in like, like 1960, would be considered a contemporary tune. So what would be a contemporary tune? What makes it a contemporary tune in Jerry's determination? What is the distinguishing factor? What is different from so what? We just did that. How many, how many chords are in so what? Just two. What makes that different from Donna Lee or Misty or There'll Never Be Another You? What is the big difference in them? Structure. So it was an ABA form tune. So well, harmonically talking. Well, be more specific. It's more is my mind, of course. Yeah, be more specific. What are what do Misty, uh, There Never Be Another You, what is this thing called love? Those kinds of tunes. What do they have in common? Harmonically. They're, they're based on what? On resolution. Functions? Two five ones. Two five ones. Mm, okay. They're based on two five one. That kind of harmonic motion. A modal tune or a contemporary tune is not based on. It may have two five ones, but that's not the primary structure. Like a tune like Dolphin Dance. Great tune. It goes all over the place. There are two five ones in it, but they don't resolve. So so now you have you can pick out tunes. Let's pick out a tune. What's a blues you want to learn? Give me a blues. What is it? Billy's Bounce. Billy's Bounce is also what kind of tune? It's a bebop tune too, right? But it's a blues. All right? Give me a rhythm tune. Let me do this. I, my, I, I would bet money that most of you do cannot play or sing I've Got Rhythm. The actual melody that I've Got Rhythm that George Gershwin wrote. If you don't know that, you need to know that. Okay? So that's one tune. What kind of ballad would you want to play? What's a ballad? Nature Boy. Nature Boy? That's a beautiful tune. I love that tune. Okay? We'll go with Nature Boy. I played it as a boss note, but I'm sorry. Okay? Give me a standard. Hmm? Standard. Lady, Bird. Saga, Saga. Lady, Bird is, Lady Bird is an important tune, but I wouldn't consider it a standard. It's a jazz standard. I'm talking about a standard like another you. The Days of Wine and Roses. Days of Wine and Roses. I would, I would buy that. All the things you are. Autumn leaves. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Satin doll. Those are. That's the kind of standard we're talking there. Then let's talk about a Latin tune. Give me a Latin tune. Hmm. And I, uh, that's a bebop tune with a Latin feel. All right, I'm talking about a true Latin tune. Symptoms. Okay, that's a calypso. I would buy that as well, as I would "Girl from Ipanema," as I would uh, uh, "Sapinado." So you know, uh, so nice. I mean, there's, a, there's a ton of them, but the rhythm's straight. Give me, uh, give me, a, give me a bebop tune. We've already got Billy's Bounce, so you know they can overlap. A standard could be a ballad. All right, a ballad could be. What is it? You, or a scrapple. Yeah. Confirmation, scrapple from the apple. All these are bebop tunes. What's a contemporary tune? I've already given you a couple of them. What is it? Maiden Voyage. Maiden Voyage, because Voyage. Voyage. there's no two five ones there. Bright Size Lake. Hmm? Bright Size Lake. Yeah, that would be one too. All right. So you see how you're getting at? You determine, you, not me, determine what seven tunes, or seven of them, that you want to learn. And you focus your energy on what? Those seven tunes. Mm -hmm. And once you learn those seven tunes, say if you, oh, I got the standard and the ballad done, 
then you add one in each of those categories. You start to expand your repertory by doing that. Right now, what we what do we study? Things we like, things we're told to do. All right? Nothing wrong with either one of those things. But it's like working out, and you only work out your right arm. What happens to your left arm? It's not going to function the same. Okay? So you need to have a balanced way of looking at it. In those documents that I, that I put up there, you know, that you can read in Spanish, it'll give you examples of those selections, and then you can go from there. I also put up on the, on the website a list of what are, what are considered jazz, basic jazz tunes. You may already have some of this already. That's totally cool. But those are something to open your eyes to some of their options that you may want to do. Okay? So michaeltracy.com. Then where do you go? Education. ED. ED or education material. Scroll all the way to the bottom. All right? All the way to the bottom. And if you want, if you're really interested and have nothing to do with your time, you can look on any one of the things on there. Like, for example, I'm, oh, I'm not connected to the internet. Give me a break. Let's go uh, back and try it again. I We're have a question. I don't yeah. know if maybe it's in there. Hold on one sec. In there, there'll be things like this where it'll describe. Come on. There we go. It'll describe, like, that's tritone substitution. It'll do definitions of things. It'll give you bebop scales. It'll give you diminished scales. It'll give you patterns. It'll give you different ideas how to work on a song. Like, on that list at the bottom, when I said to go scroll to it, it'll say, what is this thing called love using Crimea River Lick? Specific things to look at. It'll be there, and you can welcome to use it. Now your question. Yeah. Um, how do you recommend to study language? Like, you mean jazz language? Um, Not Spanish or Portuguese. No. <laughs> or in or English, English, maybe, oh, if I want to learn tango. <laughs> what, okay, we've already talked about this. He says, what do, I, what do we do to learn to study language? Transcript. What do you do with studying language? What's the Listen. best thing to do? Listen. Listening to it. That sounds really simple. And I remember when adults my age told me when I was your age to do this, and I'm going, that's bull. Now, I didn't say it's bull. I knew they were right. But I'm going, it's got to be an easier way to do it because I'm listening now and I still don't get it. It takes time. Like learning Spanish will take me time to learn that. And I have to be immersed in the culture. I can't go home and take a class and walk out after an hour and then six, six days later I come back. I'm not going to learn it that way. So you need to hit, just pick seven songs and listen to recordings of those seven songs. If you want to listen, you want to learn the bebop language. Right, there's tons of stuff on YouTube. Just listen to it, and after a while, you go, oh, all right, I've heard that before. You're not going to recognize it immediately. It's going to take you a while. She may be faster than you, and you may be faster than him. Recognizing it, it doesn't matter. You come to it in your own time. And once you hear it, oh, then you get your instrument or voice and try to play it. And then you try to incorporate it. If I could make it into a pill that I could sell you, Dude, I'd do it, but I can't. You only can do it. And, it's, and the, the way to do a thing about practicing is you have to have goals and you have to establish what you want to do. My goal is to learn jazz language, bebop language, or the language of, what do you play? Are you saying? Yes, maybe but what do you, what do you But what do you play? Are you a guitar. vocalist? Ah, uh, guitar. Okay, I would listen to West Montgomery. I mean, I love West Montgomery. I can sing his solos. I can love his tunes. You know, uh, Benny Green. It's a piano player. Uh, uh, or someone like Tal Farlow. Or just name anybody. Just guitar players. Listen to them and learn their language. Become immersed in their language. Then you start to play play the melodies with them. Play the melody, phrase it the way they play it. Then maybe learn how to transcribe. How many of you transcribe solos? You know what I mean by transcribing? Yes. There's actually on the website... There's a thing called transcribing. Here's what I did. This will be the last thing we talk about unless you have questions. Not that long ago, I, I would teach at the Abersol workshops in the summer. And there would be saxophone master classes with probably 100 saxophones, counting the faculty and the saxophones. All right? Some played great, some were beginning. All things in between, right? And one of the questions somebody asked was, how do we transcribe? What do we transcribe? It's always a question. So I'm sitting there thinking, in my typical way of thinking, I'm going, 
I need to gather this information. So what I did is I wrote to everybody that I knew that I respected, who was an educator or a major performer, that I know that would respond to me. And I wrote them, what is your process for transcribing? What song would be the best one would you recommend to anybody for your first transcription? Because too often, we try to pick something to transcribe that's way too hard. You want to be successful. Nothing's worse than doing something and failing. And you try hard and try hard and you fail. So I asked them that. Then I asked them, what would be the next one you would do? It is an amazing amount of information I got back. I, I don't know how many people responded. There's like 40. All right, people from uh, teachers that are like me to Dave Liebman to, uh, who else is a big name? Eric Alexander, Don, and to people that are like the, the players. They sent me what was there. And the, the best part though, because it won't help you that much because they're saxophone solos. Although it's good for you to try to transcribe saxophone solos, all right? Especially if you want bebop language. But what was good are the comments they put about how to do it, how to, how, what their process was of learning to transcribe. And it's like this long, this one statement. I just, and I copied all of them down, I gave them credit, and there's all these statements about how to transcribe. That's on it. Oh, well, I'll put that on the bottom of the list too, so you won't have to try to find it. The solos won't be that important for most of you unless you play saxophone. But it's the comments all of them making about transcribing is what will be valuable. So if you like learning a language, you want to learn English, and you hear me speak, and you don't understand all the words, you go back and you look at your phone and say, okay, he said this. Oh, I got it. Like today when I try to get in the guard up there, those guards didn't speak any English. I just speak, I, hola. That's all I got. You know, you know, uno, dos, tres, I got that. It didn't get me in the door. And it, so he, you know, he got his phone, he spoke to the phone, it translated it for him. I went, oh, and then I wrote back and he let me in. So you do that. You, trans, you write out what, what you don't know. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I see. I get it, and it, you know, it takes time. You have, one of the biggest things a musician has to learn is patience. That's a hard one, because we all want to be good right now, especially at your age. When you're seven and eight years old, you don't care. You just want to play. When you get our age, I'm wasting my time. I can't learn. No, it's, be patient. It'll come to you. All right, any questions? All right. <laughs> How do you manage to know many tunes like harmony? <laughs> melody? No, <laughs> harmony tunes. No, you need. You're a bass player, right? Yes. You need to learn melodies too. No, yeah, but the, the uh -uh, uh -uh. such a problem for me. Like I, I. You can remember. remember that. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. learning harmony. That's a struggle for all of us. Okay, and I can guarantee you. Again, as you age. It becomes easier for a minute, then it becomes harder. There's tunes I used to know I can't remember. It's like, ah, oh, I gotta think a minute. What we're doing, we did so what? So what's a good example? Because it's so simple and it's so clear. What is the difference in the first chord and the next chord in two? What is the difference? A half step. What do you call that comparison? It starts with an R. Relationship. The relationship. What is the relationship of this chord to that chord? This part of the tune to that part of the tune? All right. You look, what else did we say today that was important? I said, what made a difference between a modal tune and or a contemporary tune and other songs? What was the, what was the thing that that showed? Two, five, one. Two, five, one, right? You start to recognize groups. I'm certain that most of you played with Legos as kids, right? I think of Harmony as Legos. This 251 is a yellow one. This two five this minor two five one is a green one. This one is not a two five one, but it's like a combination that I recognize as red. I start to put those I start to look at them as groups, not as one at a time. Most of us typically look at chords at one at a time. Why do we talk about form? Why do we say Misty is A B A? When you say that, you know the A section, if you know that, you know seventy five percent of the song. You don't have to learn all of it. You learn eight measures and you have 75%. Then how do the middle eight measures, the bridge, how does that differ? That's a different animal. But what you do is you you look at a set of, like uh, you mentioned confirmation. 
All right. Confirmation starts on a one chord, goes down a half step, that becomes a minor, I mean a half diminished, so it's a minor two five, two five, then two five, then two five, then one. The blocks fall down, and there you are. If I tell you you're in the key of F, well the next chord is going to be E half diminished. If I tell you in the key of G, next chord is going to be what? G sharp half diminished. And then the process goes from there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what you do is you look for relationships and look for similarities and ways of, and people call it a formula, harmonic formula. Okay? Mm, in your experience, like playing with singers, do you oh. think it's the same? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's the same for singers and other instruments to approach, for example, your website material? I, well, I want, you need to be careful. Don't distinguish yourself different than everybody else. All right? I used to work with a really wonderful vocalist. And we don't do that. We, we would do pop tunes. It was in a dance band. You know, I did that. And we would end up doing all kind of dance tunes, you know, and everything from like Proud Mary to Madonna tunes to Motown. And then she'd turn around and sing Round Midnight. And then she'd turn around and sing uh, something like Kansas City, which is the blues. So she didn't differentiate the songs she did. She just liked to sing. And she didn't improvise. Kathy could have if she wanted to, I think. But that's not what she did. I think if you want to be a jazz musician, the key is you need to be able to stylize or interpret a song, which we all need to do, and as a vocalist too. I think it's important for you to know all these things that we know too. Is it going to be easier? In some ways it's much easier for you to do it because you don't have to manipulate an instrument. All right? It's harder because you can't manipulate an instrument. You know, if you want to sing an F and you want an F sharp, you got to be able to sing that half step. I just got to go this, and I got it. So I think the things on the website about practicing, the other stuff about the skills and things, some of that may be something you don't need. You can hear it and not have to maybe understand it. But I tell you what, I know some vocalists who know all that stuff. I, some other, I know some other great vocalists who don't know any of it. And, she, and he or she do sound really well. It just depends on what, what you're curious about. But I would, not, I would not run away from doing it just because you sing. Any way that I would run away from singing if I play an instrument. It's all connected. We're all, we're, we're, what's our job? What is our job? To make music. All right? Anything else? No? You want to get out of here, right? <laughs> Not without a picture, though. It's going to, go my, going to go on my website, so we'll do that. So whose phone is this? Mike. Okay, you want to see? Yeah, I want you to airdrop that to me. <laughs> All right? Hey, folks, I thought it was really fun working with you today. It really made me think. And that's, that's the other thing about an improvisation. I don't have a book in front of me. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. What did I do when I came in here? Yeah, ask for the Improvise. topic. <laughs> I asked for something, you know? And then it got me going. And I went from that way, and I played for you, and we did that kind of thing. That's what it's about. And I guarantee, this is going to sound terrible, but it's true. The vast majority of you will not be playing music probably 10 or 15 years from now professionally. Only because life will take you in different directions. Not because you can't or don't want to. But your love of music and what you learn from being an improviser will impact your life forever. For ex Here's another example that I use with, with parents all the time that come to school and say, well, what is my son or daughter going to do to make money when he gets out of school? Right? We all worry about that. Right? I've been... I have been one of the most fortunate people in the world to do exactly what I like to do and get paid for it and get to meet you. I got people who play far better than I do, teach far better than I teach, but don't get to do what I do. Circumstance, it helps. I'm pretty good at what I do, but I get this opportunity, so I recognize that. Here's one thing I share with these parents. Music, specifically jazz, gives you something that other disciplines don't do. For example, when you're in a practice room playing by yourself, you have to be what? Completely dedicated to that time period. Be willing to be working on your own, singly driven to a task. You set a goal, you establish it, you work toward that. You may be working with a teacher and they show you what to do, but you have to close yourself in a little room and you're isolated and you can work by yourself to establish what you can do. 
But to make that work, you have to work with others in a group and give up all of that individuality to play with somebody else. And if you don't, it's not successful. There's no discipline that does that. Or it makes you, requires you, forces you, if you want to do it, to be an individual and be solely driven in what you do, but then requires you to give that up to be part of a whole to make it work. Tell me something else that does that. Nothing that I know of. Probably is, but I can't think of it. What other discipline, if the world worked this way, we wouldn't have wars. When you're playing in a band, save a quintet. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the only horn player. Their job, whoever it is, is to support me. They do whatever it is to make me sound as good as I can. And my job is to interact with them in a respective way, a respectful way, utilizing their skills to help me do what I can do. When I'm done, what happens next? That, that job, that baton, you ask about any of the song, I hand it off to somebody else. They get to do it, and then I'm now required to be that supportive person. Then he hands or she hands it off to somebody else. You see what I'm getting at? The roles reverse. Everybody has got to be an integral part of what's happening. And if you don't do that, it's not going to work. It's not successful. Like a soccer team. You got the best player in the world, the best player in the world, but he doesn't share the ball with anybody else. So what are you going to do? What's, what's, what's going to happen to the team? You're going to lose. Then you have another team. Like we have a great basketball team at home, a, a women's basketball team. There's no real star on it, but they win games. Why? Because they play together. They pass the ball. They're respectful of each other. Not one person hogs it. That works with the band too. Band is the music and sports are very much alike. One person cannot make a team. One person does not make a band. So to learn that stuff, it's important to do that. That way you can interact that way. Does that make sense? Yes. So, you know, it's not about money, it's about learning. And when you learn to do that, you can apply that craft to anything. A lawyer, a business person, a politician. I mean, those are skills you can't teach. You have to experience it and learn it. It don't come out of a book. Right? That's probably a good place to end it. Right? Thank you. Thank you.